Now this is a very exciting result because Laplace's equation was the governing equation that we had for incompressible flow. So what we really now have is an incompressible flow in the xi eta space where the flow is represented by this potential phi bar where phi bar is beta v hat. So the first question that comes to mind is what does the airfoil look like in this new space? Has it changed to a different airfoil? Well, we had y equals f of x defining the shape of our original airfoil, and now we have some shape eta equals, we'll say it called the function q, of t. Now from the picture earlier, we had the df dx is just tan theta. And if we apply the linearized boundary condition for the wall that we got last time, which is v hat is v infinity tan theta, this is v infinity df dx from this equation. And v hat, by definition, is v c hat dy. So writing this in terms of our new potential, this is 1 over beta v c bar dy. And applying the variable transform, this gives us d c bar d eta. So what this means is that in the transform space, v infinity times dq dc, which is the slope, is going to be d phi bar d eta. So this is just applying the definition of uh, the flow tangency condition in the transform space. What we can see is that the right-hand sides of these two equations are the same. So the left-hand sides must be the same. So v infinity dq d eta is the same as this, v infinity df dx. So the v infinities cancel, and what we get is that df dx equals dq dc. What this says is that the shape of the airfoil in the transform space is the same as in the original space. So this is really remarkable. What this now says is that the transformation that we've done relates the compressible flow over an airfoil in xy space to the incompressible flow over the same airfoil in the xi eta space. So this is going to lead us to a very useful result. So let's continue on. Now, we had the linearized pressure coefficient last time as minus 2 u hat over v infinity. Now, if we use our transformation, We can write this in terms of the potential and then apply the definition of the new potential and then apply the change of coordinate systems. Where this by definition, is u bar. So putting that together, what we get is that Cp is just 1 over beta times negative 2 u bar over v infinity. But this term in the parentheses is just the linearized pressure coefficient for the incompressible flow. So we call this Cp naught.
So this rule here says then that CP for the compressible flow is CP naught over beta. And if we go back and use our definition of beta, we get that CP is CP naught over the square root of 1 minus m infinity squared. So this is what's called the prantle glauert rule. Which says that you can correct the incompressible pressure distribution for compressibility by accounting for the free stream Mach number and obtain a new pressure distribution. So now if we think about what the impact of this rule is for lift and moment coefficients, we can see that actually it's, it's quite simple because the same relationship must hold since CL and CM, the lift and moment coefficients per unit span, are both obtained from integrations of the pressure coefficient, then we simply must get that CL is CL not the incompressible CL over the square root of 1 minus m infinity squared, and similarly CM is CM not the incompressible moment coefficient, coefficient over the square root of 1 minus m infinity squared. So this was the first compressibility correction that was developed, and it's so simple that it's still useful today for initial estimates of compressibility effects. Note that we still have zero drag because this is an inviscid formulation. Unless m infinity is high enough that we would locally get supersonic flow on the body and then have shocks and the associated wave drag even in an inviscid flow, but since we said that this compressibility correction can't account for those things, that's what restricts the free stream Mach number to be 0.7 or so or less, depending on the airfoil, um, to ensure that we're not getting into those regions of supersonic flow, because then, indeed, uh, we, we may not be accurately capturing the change in lift and moment coefficients resulting from compressibility.